Well, Mick Palmer is a former commissioner of the Australian Federal Police. After years of advocating a tough on drugs approach, has changed tack. I mean, the whole aim of Australia's illicit drug policy is harm minimisation. And when you look at what we're really doing in regard to young users on the street, uh, we're not protecting them. Instead of reducing harms in that environment, we're aggravating. And you can't criminalise it as a means to solve it. It makes absolute sense to, to try to test the quality of the drugs that people are taking. We've got to agree nationally, as Matt said, to commence trial drug testing of pills at festivals and similar public gatherings. If it doesn't work, we stop it, for God's sake. The aim has to be to save lives. Why the hell wouldn't we want to sign up to that? We need to stop demonising and criminalising young users. To continue to criminalise low-level use and possession uh, is really to do our young people a disservice. Huge waste of resources. Publicly embarrasses a lot of young people who happen to be busted in the process. Uh, and obviously potentially gives people convictions for a crime that you have to argue should never be. It creates alarm and fear. Uh, to cause them not to be able to share their problems with their parents and their family, to hide things they should be openly discussing and dealing with in a health and medical way rather than a, uh, a hidden, you know, anti-criminal way. I don't think it deters many people from attempting to get drugs into a festival that intended to do so. On that assessment, it's a failure. I think it's a failure, yes. If they are determined to take drugs, to ensure, as somebody has said, there are signs to say, don't be a dill, test your pill. I mean, why wouldn't you want your son to test their pills before they use them? We just can't stand still. Standing still is not an option. The results we're getting are nowhere near good enough. We must be protecting people better than we are now and minimising the harms against those people. If we move towards decriminalisation, we've got to say we can't be satisfied with where we are. Let's try a few things and see if they work. They certainly work in other parts of the world. Portugal's been a success story. Uh, it's now nearly 70 or 18 years since uh, they changed the law. It is still not lawful. They don't sell it lawfully. Uh, it is still unlawful to purchase the drug. Uh, but they've decriminalised the use and possession of it. As you say, the end result of that is, is that it has changed behaviour patterns. It has certainly significantly reduced, uh, reduced drug use. It has reduced the harms created by drug use. Uh, many positive benefits. The word you used was evidence, and it seems to me, whether we're talking about pill testing or some of this wider drug reform stuff, but particularly in regard to, to pill testing, on the evidence, I can't see how you could refute it. We went to Iraq on less evidence than what we've got about pill testing. <laughs> um, consider the establishment on a trial basis, why we'd need a trial basis on the back of the medically supervised injecting room that's operated for 17 years in King's Cross, I'm not sure, of controlled drug mo monitoring rooms to assist in containing, managing and reducing episodes of drug abuse, again, increasing the safety levels, the protections, the safeguards and the education. I'm not for a moment am I saying we should condone drug use. I just think there are better ways to deal with it. The environment worldwide, not only within Australia, is screaming out for a genuine debate and the political courage, if you like, to engage in a genuine debate.